and they would tell me of the war stories day in, day out. <laughs> How are you today? Nobody asks you how you are usually, and if they do, you just say fine, thank you. You don't start telling them all about your problems. You just have this professionalism and you no, everything's fine. There's no way that we can reduce or get rid of suffering, but we can do something about it. And really listening um, to, to a patient's needs and, and letting them know that they were heard, regardless of the story. While she transitioned into motherhood, I felt I transitioned from a student into a midwife. I don't know what I'm going to see today. And that's when what nursing's all about. So it's all about getting rid of pain. When I was a very, very junior nurse, um, and I was she fell out of bed and broke her head. Beautiful young lady. Very, very junior, um, and I had just no marks at all, apart from a big gash across the back of her head. Done, and I and just felt all this blood really that came onto me, and she's on the floor um, like. And she was bleeding. I got to see people in the lowest of the states, um, heightened states of anxiety. Um, she was sitting in the bed, some gas in the air with the nasal oxygen and stuff, and we would go in and wash and make her comfortable and stuff. Sure enough, sure and I remember she said to me one time, um, do they tell you what's wrong with us? Or what time? I'm trying to deal with And I kind of just went, this lad, me. Yes, 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 you know, it could have been me sitting there next to the bed. Of course, I think it was Sure enough, she went into half. What she was really saying is, you know, help, I'm dying. I want to connect with somebody. prioritise the care of our patients whenever they are in such a vulnerable stage, I suppose. Yeah. and we walk through the door and whether you're a nurse or a midwife you introduce yourself still amazes me when you see this thing you know this thing this beautiful baby come out how does it even happen Maybe it's what we don't do in 
just maybe protecting the space and allowing uh, nature to unfold. And we're the, we're the guardians of that birth, but sometimes it's not really all about what we do. pictures and the midwife literally holds the woman you know on her face and just looks into her eyes like professionals have a lot of power and the midwifery and mother partnership we do, the power can be obstructive in that you know we try and use it as a therapeutic learning but we're not here to tell a mother how to birth and how to care for a baby postnatally it's the most inspirational experience for yourself and for that woman as well Sometimes there's no there's no time to even think. I think it's just a skill that you learn, but you it's literally like just closing a door and on another one. If it's not trauma, in situations where the patient is palliative and you know they're you, you know that they're not in pain, you're just kind of waiting on them to take that last breath, it's actually really peaceful. family was the water, <laughs> you know, um, like we knew all about what they were up to. Do you know what, this isn't about me, this is about the woman. So it puts into perspective life. You know, I've cried with them openly because we're vulnerable as well. And it's okay to show your vulnerability, you know, it shows you're caring and you're empathising with them and, and, and what they're going through. It's okay to do that.
We're in a caring profession. You know, if, if you don't shed a tear, you know. You feel like you're proud, you're really proud of your profession. You feel like, um, you feel like a duck underwater. You know, the legs are, you know, your patient could, you know, your patient could have just been told that they have cancer. Another one may have just passed away. You still have to come out of them rooms and go into the next patient room and pretend nothing's happened. Forever more sort of use that expression that people get instead of upset, say, hot bath and a bottle of wine. I don't think you can do it cognitively and sometimes when you have that cup of tea half an hour later it's too soon, it's, you haven't processed it properly. For me it comes 48 hours later and I, 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 and I think it, it sort of hits you in a wave. For me I go to the pool and I swim and I put my head under the water and I don't and I let whatever needs to come out come out in the water.